A writer's life, I should warn the students here, is that being a writer and a journalist is no way to make your fortune, but you have a very enjoyable lot of job satisfaction and a lifestyle sort of beyond what your official income can maintain. Uh, all of that rum is tax deductible. It was research. <laughs> But I, I, I'm not obsessed with rum. I'm, I'm very interested, and I should mention that uh, it is a legitimate development issue because one of the reasons that the Caribbean islands um, have to sell rum if they want any economic development is that the European Union won't let them sell sugar because of sugar beet, and we won't let them sell sugar because of high fructose corn syrup and Archer Daniel Midlands. So these islands that gave birth to the modern economy are basically being strangled. Uh, and we threw it in. Um, President Clinton, you may remember, took the European Union to the World Trade Organization for um, their preferential access to Caribbean bananas. So in one fell swoop, we've basically taken the two main industries they have and knocked the skids from under them. And they're now totally dependent on tourism. So one of my slogans when I do talk about rum is that every tot of rum, unless it's Bacardi, helps third world development <laughs> and gives people a warm spiritual glow as well as the other type, <laughs> spirituous glow. Uh, but I'm here to talk about the United Nations, not, um, even though, as I said, it is related. And um, I think the point about the United Nations is that it's very difficult for most people, especially looking at the media here, to get any type of objective picture of it. Uh, you know, on the one hand, the, uh, the many of us who are sort of liberals in our outlook, international outlook, we see a need for a global society, and there tends to be a lot of piety. The United Nations must be right. And, uh, and on the other hand, of course, we have the people who, um, I summed up, if those of you have ever read or seen the Left Behind series by Timothy LaHaye about the apocalypse... Uh, remember, this is one of the best-selling books in America. A lot of people get their facts from this. The Antichrist is the Secretary General of the United Nations. Oh. <laughs> this gives the other side of how people, you know, the, apart from the piety, you have this sort of horror. And um, one of the things I have to say is just because a body is corrupt and inefficient and manifestly unable to deal with problems, you don't dissolve Congress. <laughs> <laughs> You try to work with it. <laughs> uh, it's the same with the United Nations. Uh, you know, it's uh, to sort of carry on the quotations. Um, you look at it, and sometimes you despair when you see the problems not being resolved and the way it's actually often used as a sort of um, perpetual intray. Governments put problems in the United Nations not to solve them, but to give the appearance of doing something about it. Because then they very work very resolutely to make sure that nothing actually gets done. But they can go back to their publics and say, hey, look, you know, we're doing this. We, we sent a resolution to the United Nations. Or, it's in the hands of the United Nations and there's nothing we can do. Uh, and that's been a sort of spectacular trait of major governments, but the United States in particular. Um, because the other part you'd never guess is, in fact, the Bush administration has had more recourse to the United Nations than any administration for the previous 20 years. And this is one of the problems with diplomacy when it becomes an oxymoron, um, is that here you are, the United States, is, it, 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 within three months of the end of the Iraq war, and, and I came here four years ago that year, and I think, I suspect I was very gloomy about the outcome, and I sort of was right. <laughs> um, if you remember, immediately in the aftermath of the invasion, uh, Richard Pearl, one of the leading foreign policy advisors to the administration, announced in The Guardian that the United Nations is dead. Thank God. That was the headline. Within a month, the White House discovered that they couldn't sell oil. I had all of this Iraqi oil. Wolfowitz had announced that it wasn't going to cost the American taxpayers anything, which is another sort of um, check out that one for accuracy. <laughs> on the prophecy stakes. Um, and it was all going to be paid for out of Iraqi oil revenues. But they discovered that the rest of the world has a sort of slightly, slightly stricter adherence to legality. And as far as the rest of the world was concerned, Iraqi oil was stolen property. No one would buy it. No one would sell it. No one would train it. You couldn't put a tanker of it on the high seas. There'd be you know, a writ slapped on it, lean, on any port in the world. So they had to go back to the United